According to the Global Millennial Survey, 52% of millennials said that earning a high salary was a top priority. 52%. 48% of millennials don't care about earning a high salary. Why not? Again, the charitable view is, well, we're just not attached to stuff. We don't need your corporate structure, man. We don't need all that stuff. The, I think, more realistic view is millennials are kind of lazy. Why, if you, it's, it's just socialism, right? I mean, if you're, why would you work hard if you're not going to get that much more out of it? Why, you say, okay, I'm, I'm perfectly willing to settle for an okay salary if I don't have to work hard. The people who build things, the people who do great things, the people who really succeed at the top, they all work super duper hard. They're not willing to settle. In terms of money, if they make $100,000 a year, they want to make a million dollars a year. Some people, if they make $100,000 a year, they say, okay, cool, I'm going to only work this hard for the rest of my life. That's good. hundred grand, great. But people who really build things, who work really hard, they'll say, no, I want more. Even if they don't get more, $100,000 is a great salary. They say, no, I'm going to work even harder. The people that I've met who are really succeeding at the top of their game, the ones who have made a ton of money or have gotten super famous or have been really effective in politics, the one thing I notice about all of them is they are working all the time. They are workhorses. I think there's this myth that a lot of millennials have bought into because they bought into socialism, which is that the guys at the top are all lazy fat cats who just sit at their desk and they have their feet up and they're counting their money like the guy on the Monopoly box and they're puffing cigars and they're not working. And it's really all the people who aren't making a lot of money. They're just the ones working all the time. In my experience, I've known a lot of people who don't make a lot of money. I know a lot of people who make an okay amount of money. And I've known some people who have made a lot of money. In my experience, the ones who make a lot of money are the hardest workers. They work all the time because there's not a lot of room at the top and you got to fight really hard to get up there and they do it. I think millennials are missing that message. They're saying, well, I don't want to, I don't want to work. The system's rigged against me. Ah, if I work really, I'm going to, that means I'm going to have to subordinate my will. That means I'm going to not be able to indulge in everything I want to indulge in. That means uh, then I'm going to have to make a mortgage payment. Then I'm going to have to settle in a place, in a town. And I'm going to have to like know people and know my neighbors. That doesn't sound fun at all. I want to do me. I mean, the, the only moral rule that we follow in this culture is if it feels good, do it. You see this expressed in how we treat sex in just a hookup culture rather than a more traditional culture, if it feels good, do it. You see it in how we approach our free time. What do, what do people do in their free time? They play video games and they watch porn. And that is the definition of if it feels good, do it. Same thing in our jobs. I mean, you, you see this in this social survey, 49% of millennials would, if possible, quit their current jobs within two years. Why? Because they're dissatisfied with pay and they are not advancing as fast as they would like. They come in and they want to be the boss on day one. Less than three in 10 millennials expect to stay at a current job for the next five years because jobs aren't fun. Even fun jobs aren't fun all the time. And you're told when you come from a generation, look, I came from it. I have a ton of empathy. This is why I'm passionate about this topic is when you come from a generation where you get a participation trophy and you get really high grades, even though you don't know that much, you're going to be dissatisfied with the real professional world. I played Little League for eight years. I think I hit the ball four times. Now, I did lean into pitches like Don Baylor, so I had a pretty high on-base percentage, but I did not hit the ball. I was not good at baseball. And guess how many baseball trophies I have? Eight. Guess how many times my team won anything? any championship, none, zero times. But I have eight trophies because they gave them to me. You'll notice in colleges now, the average GPA is much, much higher than it was in the 60s and 70s. They would attack George Bush when Bush was running for president because he was a C student, but he actually had higher grades than John Kerry, who he was running against. And why? It's because a lot of people had C grades then. Now, very few people get C's because of great inflation. Now people get A's. When I was in college, it was hard to get below a B plus. You had to really work. You pretty much had to punch the professor in the face to get below a B plus. 
at, at Harvard, Harvey Mansfield, who's probably the last conservative faculty member there, he gives students two grades. He gives them the grade they deserve and then the much higher grade for their transcript because grade inflation is a reality. So you come out of that world where you're told you're super duper special and everything you do is great. You come into the professional world and then most people start out as grunts. I mean, I've worked grunt jobs, plenty of them. And if you've been told your whole life that you're a winner and you're a winner and everything you do is great and you're better than this and you get into a job where you just have to be a grunt, you'll be dissatisfied with that. You want to leave it within the next two to five years. Same thing, the percentage of millennials who see starting a family as very important is now down to 39%. That's down six points from the generation. Oh, I'm sorry, that, that's down way from the gener generation before us and the generation before that. The bright side is actually, it's a little bit higher for members of Gen Z. So it's not just that things are getting progressively worse all the time. It's actually that millennials are the most stuck in childhood. Millennials are the most miserable. In terms of the behaviors that describe the difference between adulthood and childhood, the generation that came right before us, Gen X, exhibits them at a higher rate than millennials, and the generation that's coming right after us is exhibiting it at a higher rate than millennials. There's just something about our generation which especially won't grow up. 